Um, hello, my name is Lee Chantel and I'm from Australia and I'm going to start off with the international speakers um, um, now. And um, I run a couple of websites. I run one called vivalavegan.net and that um, focuses on um, positive um, inspiration from vegans and vegan curious and I have a lot of various things on there including articles, blogs, videos, um, recipes, a forum um, and mentors as well. I also run a not-for-profit group in Brisbane, Australia where I'm mostly based and it's called Green Earth Group and um, it's an environmental organisation and we focus on um, educating people about the vegan or plant-based diet, we say. And I've put on two festivals with that as well, so all vegan environmental festivals. Um, I also was going to be a rock star in a past life, so I still do a bit of music every now and then. And um, I have a website, leashontel.com as well, where I do a bit of writing. And so Rosa has asked me to um, speak today on a few of the issues we have in Australia. But I'd just like to take a moment to say thank you, Rosa, for all your work and all the effort that you've done in putting this together. <laughs> and so we don't have a massive, um, fur, we don't have fur farms as, as you do here or in Europe and places like that. So I'm just going to go over the basics. A few of the things I'm going to speak about is like rabbits, wool, koalas and kangaroos, wallabies, and also the live trade. So um, we have the same issues in regards to veganism and animal rights that everywhere else does in the world. So, you know, farmed animals, zoos, circuses, rodeos, puppy farms, puppy factories, and viviception. Um, and we have a f probably the only sort of fur farms that we have in Australia are rabbit rabbit farms, and um, these these farms happen for mostly for the animals' flesh, so for people to consume that. Um, there's a good website called radicalrabbit.org if you want to check that out. And um, most of the rabbits aren't aren't really farmed for their fur, and some the fur trim that comes from these rabbits is when the, uh, the rabbits die. So they're not farmed for fur, specifically more for their meat. Um, and they also, I'm sure Rosa and other people have mentioned before that it's not just fur coats or fur trim or something. This also can go to like cat's toys um, and just little cheap sort of toys and trinkets that you can buy. Um, we have, has anyone heard of an Akubra hat? Does anyone know what that is? A Kubra, it's A-K-U-B-R-A, and it's like what our cowboys sort of wear. So it's a hat, it's quite big, quite big brimmed, and it's like a, depends on um, the color. And um, so we, that's sort of like one of our token sort of things that a lot of, um, um, you know, country sort of people in Australia would wear. And to make the Akubra hat, that uses 14 rabbit skins to produce. So that's pretty, that's pretty bad. Um, so, also one of our other exports, one of the major ones, is wool. Um, we have approximately 30% of all the wool used worldwide is from Australia, and about um, eight, it's mostly merino cow, um, merino sheep, and 80% of the wool is used for clothing. So that's quite that's quite a massive um, number, I think. And there's uh, quite a few issues that surround um, wool. I'm sure a lot of you know if you're vegans or animal rights activists yourself. Um, we um, have mulesing, and uh, has anyone heard of the term mulesing before? So a few people have. Um, what, it, what it means is um, you slice the skin around the sheep's tail area just to prevent infections. And it's um, done with shears and without anaesthetic. So it's quite cruel and horrible for them. Um, there's also dehorning, castration of juvenile males, docking and shearing. So all these things are a, a big issue um, with our sheep in Australia. Um, and I'm sure everyone knows of koalas and kangaroos. Who doesn't? Um, and koalas, even though some people think they are bears, they're not really bears at all. And um, they're related to kangaroos and the wombats, and they're actually a marsupial mammal. So that's, there's your fact for today about <laughs> Australian um, wildlife. 
And um, koalas are declining because of the huge hunt for their furs and urban development and logging. So um, I know a lot of people from overseas like to think that we have koalas and kangaroos bouncing around in our backyard. And some people do. Like, I don't want to destroy that completely for you. But, um, like, if you live in suburban areas, you're probably not going to have a kangaroo or a koala out, out the back of your pool or something. But um, some friends of mine, that um, their house is back onto like a wildlife area or a koala park or areas that are protected um, for koalas or kangaroos. You can see the little wallabies or the kangaroos or the koalas up in the tree and that's pretty cool. Um, and um, for in less than a decade, koalas have dropped by 90%. Oh, really? So, that, yeah, it's very heartbreaking. And they're so beautiful. They don't really like to cuddle much because uh, they like to scratch more than cuddle, but they're very, they're very lovely. And, um, and in Australia, um, we do a lot with koala, kangaroo, wallaby, and possum skins. So a lot of people, in particular China, um, like to import those products from us. Um, cat and dog fur imports were banned in 2004, but they still get to stores. So I'm not sure about labelling with fur and that in other countries, but um, in Australia you don't actually have to have any labels whatsoever um, to say where the fur comes from. So an issue that, that we had recently was a lot of people were buying like fake fur. I think that's an American thing too, isn't it? They, they thought they were buying fake fur. They thought they were doing something good, you know, if they're yeah. a vegan or um, against cruelty. And um, they bought something fake and then there was all these tests done on all these. And this is mostly cheap clothing as well. There was all these tests done and they said that the fur came from cats and dogs and it just was very upsetting for a lot of people. So um, if, if a product like that is actually labelled, it is um, like labelled, can be labelled as rabbit fur or, or fake fur or even nothing at all. So even if these places are actually saying it's, you know, rabbit fur or something like that, it can definitely be from dogs and cats. And um, we have kangaroos and wallabies in Australia. Wallabies are just like a, a sh probably like a smaller version of a kangaroo. And kangaroos can be massive, like the big reds, like want to box with you and everything. And that um, the males in particular get up on their on their tail, and they're they're pretty amazing to see actually. And um, I actually took um, one of my friends to see some kangaroos out um, near a cemetery. And they just sort of just jump around and hang out. And we saw a couple boxing each other, and she got it all on camera. It was just so cute. <laughs> and um, so kangaroos and wallabies are seen as pests. So there's a lot of people that are licensed to hunt these animals. And um, they're killed in the wild all the time by licensed hunters. And um, unlike over here, um, guns are not readily available in Australia. A lot of people that have farms or live in the outback or live in the country, they will have, they will have um, guns to get rid of wild populations or pest animals and things like that. Um, and so the kangaroos and wallabies are used um, for furs, skins and leather. And they're exported to places like Europe, the US and Asia. And um, we have, because the, the kangaroo fur is like really light and um, not heavy to ship, a lot of that is like exported um, to quite a few places quite cheaply. And it's also used for footwear. So I follow my Australian Football League, AFL, and um, I have a team and some people that play that sport, they actually have... Um, footwear made from kangaroos, which is horrible, but it seems to be a bit of a trend happening at the moment. And I think um, that's that famous soccer player, Beckham, what's his first name? Yeah. David, Beckham. David Beckham. He, I think he has shoes from um, kangaroos as well. Um, so that's a bit sad. So yeah, they're, they're also farmed um, or killed. Then we don't have kangaroo farms. So the kangaroos are wild in areas, um, controlled in particular areas and just hunted. And there's horrible stories of people going out um, just with their friends at night or even with their kids, which is appalling, and just teaching them to um, disrespect our native, our native animals. 
Um, we also have a term for people um, with the environmental movement. There's quite a few um, crazy people out there that like to adopt certain things and are more environmentally friendly. And one of them, there's this term called um, kangatarianism. Can anyone guess what that is? <laughs> Pardon? <laughs> yeah, so they're vegetarian, except they eat kangaroos. Because that's, that's good for the environment, you know? We are pescatarians. Yeah, so yeah, but it's you know, eating our emblem, one of our national emblems. And um, so people actually think that that's a good thing to do because they are seen as pests. Um, so that's a bit ridiculous. But anyway. Um, we also have farmed crocodiles as well, so that's probably but that's a really small amount, sort of um, in rednecky type areas that people have crocodiles, but they're more seen as tourist attractions than anything else. Um, and um, one of the good things, though, about kangaroos and people eating them and saying that they're environmentally friendly and all that stuff is, unlike. Um, other terms for animal flesh, like, you know, instead of saying cows, you say beef. Um, there's no name that anyone's created for kangaroo meat. So you've still got that term when, you know, you buy something from the supermarket or um, whatever place, it still says kangaroo meat. So I think that's something that we're winning a bit as well, just because they haven't thought up a, a good name for it yet. Um, there was this amazing show on, um, it's called um, ABC, so it's our Australian Broadcasting Commission, which is one of our free-to-air um, channels in Australia, and everyone, the taxes that we pay goes to running that station as well, so they have a lot of things on it. Um, and they had this great show it's called Kangaroo Dundee, and um, if you'd really like to see just a beautiful um, I hope you can watch it over here. If you have a look at thekangaroosanctuary.com and um, this guy has in Alice Springs, which is in central Australia, right in the middle of the outback, he has quite a lot of land. So um, I, I don't know how much land he's got, but he's actually fenced it off and he has 25 kangaroos in this mob. So we call it, I don't know if you use the term mob, but it's like a, um, an indigenous Australian term for like your friends, your pals, your group, your crew, your family. So he's got um, 25 kangaroos in this mob and he goes around and he rescues animals um, from um, just that have been caught by the, on the side of the road that have lost their mums and he rescues them and he acts as their mother. Like he calls himself the kangaroo's mother and he does all these gorgeous things and um, you can actually go and visit the place now. So check out um, the kangaroosanctuary.com to see that. And another thing with um, the ABC, that, um, that channel, I'm sure a lot of you are aware of um, the live trade in Australia at the moment. And the ABC, a, a program called Four Corners that does a lot of investigation type um, shows, um, they had something about the live trade. So I know a lot of you have mentioned that to me um, since I've been here and previously. And um, what, what happened was it was say a, t a 30 to 40 minute program that actually showed a lady from Animals Australia, one of our, one of our major sort of welfare groups in Australia. And it was undercover investigations in about 11 um, slaughterhouses in Indonesia. So it was horrific imagery for a lot of people to see what the cows go through. And it was all over social media. It was all over talk back radio. It was all, you know, politicians were talking about it. People were crying live on air and everything. And it was just a massive thing that happened. That was shown on Monday night. And on the Thursday night, it was replayed. So pretty much everyone in Australia, if they hadn't seen it, they knew about it and they had an opinion on it. Um, unfortunately, it became a bit of a racial sort of issue as well for a lot of people. Like, you know, oh, the Indonesians don't know how to look after cattle, but we do. Back here in Australia, we, we have humane ways of looking after the animals, um, but they will die. And um, so there was a lot of people that got involved with protests and a lot of actions. There was a lot of letter writing campaigns, um, calling MPs. And there was so much work that went into it and so much awareness that came from this Animals Australia action. 
and um, it was actually halted for about a month, the trade from Australia to Indonesia, which was pretty amazing. Um, and a few, a few people that, you know, we promote veganism, we just got online and just said to people, you know, you don't, if you don't like this, this is what you can do, you can be vegan. And I think, um, you know, I don't agree 100% with any groups, any vegan or animal rights groups, but you can always use something that they do to help promote the cause and to, you know, get more people to at least talk about something. And um, we have always sent animals overseas for slaughter, like it's always what we do. And um, so we've got sheep to Turkey, cattle to Indonesia, and horses to India. And um, the Animals Australia, they're still going forward with a lot of undercover investigations. And um, we also um, have, or just, just recently, I think it was this week, or just, uh, since I've been in America anyway, um, in Tasmania, which if you know Australia, it's the little, it looks like a little island just underneath um, the main islands of Australia. Um, there's an independent um, MP, so Member of Parliament, Andrew Wilkie, and he, he does a lot of um, good stuff as an independent um, MP, and he's introduced a private member's bill to the Federal Parliament, and that's to phase out live export by 2017. And um, we're about to have um, to vote for our, our next Prime Minister and so it's just complete chaos in all of politicians and um, or what comes over into our media as well, especially mainstream media. But um, hopefully that will pass and hopefully it won't just get swept under the carpet with the elections that are coming forward. So, um, and our opposition leader that's trying to get in um, when people vote, he actually says that if he gets in, he's going to apologise for the ban and he'll, um, if he gets elected, so it's pretty, he's, he's pretty ridiculous, but anyway. And um, so they're just a few of our issues that we have in Australia. Like I said before, we don't have um, fur farms like um, you do over here, but there's always ways that you can um, stop these sort of things from happening. And it's not buying these products, it's not supporting these things. If you see someone that's wearing something that you disagree with, um, you can just say, you know, in a, a kind way and in a non-judgmental, non-threatening way, just are you aware of the processes that happen with that? And I think it's just all about educating people and just leading by example. So thank you for your attention today.